What's up, everybody? Dr. Dale here, the Wild Doc. Looking forward to this discussion. Hopefully, it tails uh, and piggybacks off of the uh, recent discussion I had on the reality that um, Discover Magazine and research shows us that uh, cancers can spontaneously remit. They can go away on their own. The body has the capability of beating what's called terminal cancer. I did a uh, video here, I believe, last week. If you search the YouTube videos or Facebook videos, it may not be up on YouTube just yet um, at the time of this recording. Obviously, if this one's on YouTube right now and you're watching it, then yes, the prior ones would be up on YouTube as well. Um, but these videos go up on YouTube. Um, you can like us on Instagram. You can follow us on Facebook, that type of thing. This is Facebook Live. TWD will not work right now. We're not giving you the access to the articles except for unless you wanted to Google the titles that I'm reading to you. Um, we'll get a large data bank for you uh, with all these research articles, with all these uh, references, with these general articles so that you can help your family members and friends, help them defeat cancer, help them not ever get cancer, help them test properly for cancer, and then also, God forbid, if they do um, uh, become diagnosed, if they are diagnosed with cancer and they develop cancer, well, then they're going to have a better understanding of how to navigate the system and make better informed decisions because ultimately, New England Journal of Medicine finds that chemo patients or cancer patients are not being given the truth. They're not being helped to understand the reality that chemotherapy is not curative. That doesn't mean it's a deadly cancer. I'm going to point that out specifically. Because again, Discover Magazine, the body can beat terminal cancer. Well, it's called terminal because doctors don't have anything that can cure you, so they figure you're going to die. Meanwhile, patients from around the world are actually proving that they can actually beat their own cancers when doctors say it's deadly. So don't ever let a doctor convince you that it's deadly, but listen to them when they say that there is no cure for your cancer, you better look them in the eyes and tell them, you may not know of a cure, but don't ever tell me that I'm dying. That's what I believe every single cancer patient should be able to have the guts to say, and I know that may be very scary at the moment in time, them being told by a physician, it's not like they can respond in the way I can here on this video. But if patients were given the truth, everyone has the capability to heal. Everyone does, if they still have a breath in their lungs, if they have a nerve impulse in their brain. Folks, people are beating terminal cancers, and they're only called terminal and deadly because doctors don't know what to do. Go find somebody that will give you the straightforward facts, but also help you in understanding these are some things that people do when they beat deadly cancers. So, wanted to, um, so if you want that article about giving people hope and, and helping them realize that just because a doctor says it's deadly, just because their opinion is that you're going to die, well, that is not the gold, you know, truth. That's not the God's honest truth. And the reality is people aren't being God's, given God's honest truth about what chemotherapy can do for them or not do for them. So Time Magazine's up on the screen in front of you, behind me here on the television. Our cancer patients hopes to, for chemo too high. Now they're specifically talking in this New England Journal of Medicine. I've got the article, the research reference right here for you. Um, that one's about Juglone, which is Black Walnut Hall. Sorry, wrong one. Patients, but I will mention that because actually terminal colorectal cancer and um, colon cancer has actually been shown to be killed by black walnut hull. So knowing that, then I think I would say, you know what, if your chemotherapy is gonna actually shorten my life, I think I'm gonna go and chew on a couple black walnuts. The hull, the green part. It's gotta be green during the season, but even nuts. Black walnut hull was one of the most anti-cancer um, nuts, actually the most anti-cancer nut. Black walnut, not just the English walnut. But walnut in general was very, very effective. Um, so those are nuts that you can actually consume. Um, the hull extract being extremely strong in juglone, um, juglone nigra, um, black walnut, that extract actually is very, very anti-cancer and actually has a systemic effect in the body. It can be absorbed into the bloodstream and have an anti-cancer effect in that manner, but also antibacterial, because that's most of the research on its systemic effects have been done not in human beings for the purpose of treating cancer, but actually been done in its antimicrobial or antibiotic effects. 
So it's actually one that's been shown to even kill off Lyme's disease in certain forms, but it did need to be at higher dosages. Just a little side note there. But that's a lot of where the research has gone with Juglan nigra, so black walnut hull. Um, so this, this research study from New England Journal of Medicine paints a very vivid picture, I think, and, and should be a very angering and um, eye-opening picture for many of us. To be able to see that the majority of cancer patients dealing with lung cancer, two cancers specifically, terminal cancer, or what doctors call terminal, terminal lung cancer or terminal colorectal, or colon cancer. So those two cancers were the primary ones evaluated. They took 1,193 patients who were being given chemotherapy. Now this had to be patients that, were, that desired to go through chemotherapy and were still alive. I kind of thought to myself as I was reading this article though, I thought, Hmm, why didn't they contact all the patients who decided not to go th forward with chemotherapy and say, hey, are you still alive? And then look at the ratio. How many patients are still alive who selected to go through chemotherapy? And how many patients are alive who are dealing with terminal color colorectal or colon cancer and lung cancer? How many of those are still alive who selected to go through chemo and those who didn't? And let's see the ratio and see how many who, who, who wins doing chemo or not doing chemo, but oddly enough, they didn't do that here because I believe they don't really want to know the truth because they're literally detailing in this article that doctors aren't telling people the cold, cold hard facts, as they call it. They're not telling people the truth about chemotherapy and its inability to cure cancer. So here we go. Um, so they say at least two thirds of people in the advanced cancers in new survey believe that chemotherapy they received might cure them even though the treatment is only being given to buy some time or make them comfortable. So one of the important factors I think people need to gleam from this discussion I'm having today with you all is this right here. Chemotherapy should always, doesn't matter if it's terminal colorectal cancer, whether it's leukemia even, even though immune-borne uh, cancers or immune, you know, cancers that are coming from the immune system, like leukemia, if they're coming from that, chemotherapy actually has, quote unquote, some curative effect because it just destroys your immune system. But in terms of solid tumors, chemo or chemotherapy doesn't cure you. It doesn't cure your cancer. It can't get rid of the cause of cancer, and even leukemia it can't either, but it can destroy and wipe out your immune system, where it never recovers strong enough to produce enough immune cells that then are considered cancer again. But your risk of cancers of solid tumors in your future are much higher if a child deals with leukemia at a young age and then goes through chemotherapy, which wipes out their immune system, and then they deal with solid tumors later in life and many health issues. Another topic, another discussion. But just like they said there, buy some time. That should be a major point taken from this entire discussion. Chemotherapy or surgery, any type of medical practice to treat cancer should always be seen as a manner to buy time. Why? So cancer is a functional repair tissue. 2005, this is a phenomenal little write-up on it. And again, you can see the screen in front of you when Ashley puts it up, or you can read it behind me on the TV screen. Cancer is a functional repair tissue. I want to read this to you. When a wound occurs, and the reason they're discussing it in, the, in terms of a wound is cancer cells act at a genetic level even. Genes turn on and off just by cutting your arm. See these scratches? Got that from uh, Greenbrier this weekend. All right, climbing a tree. Greenbrier scrapes me, well guess what? Those cells in that region of that scrape in that cut, guess what? They started acting similar to cancer cells. They even turned off genes that would signal for cellular death or apoptosis, started turning on genes, turning on genes that are much like cancer genes that promote, promote cellular growth without death. That is cancer, folks, short and simple. So, a wound occurs. When a wound occurs, growth and repair genes, genes such as oncogenes, proto-oncogenes, etc., in surrounding cells are activated and secretion of growth and repair factors are then generated. Stimulating these things, it, it, repair factors, is induced to heal the wound. However, if the wound is persistent due to chronic physical radiation, oh, radiation causes cancer? Yes, it does, because it causes the cellular response. That is why radiation causes cancer stem cells. Chemotherapy causes cancer stem cells. 
So they go on, radiation, electromagnetic fields, oh, like our cell phones, and God forbid 5G coming to us all, trauma particles like asbestos and others. This, or chemical, carcinogens, chemotherapy is a carcinogen, toxic chemicals, heavy metals, et cetera, or biological things such as aging, which is not damaging. <clears throat> as people get older, typically their life is caught up with them, their lifestyle, or their poor lifestyle catches up with them. Aging isn't a cause of disease. You just lived a longer time in a bad lifestyle and your lifestyle caught up with you. I hate when they say aging. But free radicals, inflammation, nutrient deficiencies, bacteria, viruses, stress. What's unique about that statement there is inflammation and nutritional deficiencies affect every single other thing. So you, the impact radiation, electromagnetic fields, um, your ability to cope and adapt and reduce inflammation, your ability to fight off a bacteria or a, a viral infection, your ability to even heal a cut or scrape is going to be determined in part by your nutritional status. So nutrition is pretty darn important. But going on here, so those things, damage of amplification of gene, act, gene activation in surrounding cells may lead then to clinical cancer. So this wound, whatever's damaging, whatever's causing the problem, whatever's causing the cancer is causing the problem. Chemotherapy is not, the lack of chemotherapy. No, note that that did not say the lack of chemotherapy circulating in your bloodstream is what causes wounds. Chemotherapy circulating in your bloodstream actually causes wounds. It causes gene mutations. It activates genes to signal for cells to rapidly replicate after the chemotherapy is gone. It kills rapidly re replicating cells, but then your body has to respond after the damage has been done by that napalm, basically, that chemotherapy, to then start trying to heal the damage that the chemo has done. And that's where cancer stem cells can come about from chemotherapy. So again, more side notes, but based on the commonalities between cancer and wound healing, a new hypothesis of cancer is presented. Malignancies are not pass passive, mutated, useless masses. Rather, they are functional tissues produced by gene activation to secrete growth factors in an effort to heal persistent wounds in the body. Based on the hypothesis, current cancer treatments, such as chemotherapy, all right, current cancer treatments aimed at killing cancer cells alone cells only may be misguided. Yes. Sadly, patients are the ones being misguided and New England Journal of Medicine proves it. The logical extension of the hypothesis is that cancer treatment focused on wound healing by limiting causes of persistent wounds, providing repair cells, um, growth factors, or gene repair factors and substrates required by repair cells may yield more fruitful results than treatment focused on killing cancer cells alone. All right, standard therapies aimed at can killing cancer cells should be limited to adjuvant status or assistive status in essence, buying time status for limiting symptoms or buying time for completion of wound healing process. Attempts to destroy cancer cells without healing underlying persistent wounds will allow for eventual reoccurrence. And that is the truth, folks. This is an amazing, eye-opening article here in a major medical journal talking about the fact that chemotherapy, radiation, and surgery create wounds. They create damage. And those treatments have not substantially cured cancer at all. In fact, we're seeing more people die from cancer today. We're seeing more and more people each year. That's because people aren't being given the truth such as that. Paints a really good picture of the truth. Those should be assisted. Those should be the alternatives. Chemo, radiation, and surgery should be the alternative to what should be mainstream, which is correction of underlying causes by identifying all those factors that they listed. Are you ingesting carcinogenic chemicals on a daily basis? Are you nutrient deficient? Do you have substantial inflammation going on in your body and we need to get that under control? Have you a viral infection that is stimulating cancerous cells to be generated through gene expression because your cells have to replicate rapidly to heal the tissues that are being harmed by that virus, but why is that virus in your body in the first place is still even deep rooted in things like spinal alignment, nutrient deficiencies, and ultimately gut health, your use of past antibiotics. A lot of things damage your, your immune system. 
such as vaccinations, harming your immune system and skewing your immune system in the wrong direction to produce more inflammation. That's what these medical procedures do. So there's a lot of underlying factors that would lead to someone being susceptible to an infection like HPV laying in, continuing to thrive in their body. It thrives there because their body can't fight it off. Ultimately, that being the leading cause of cancer, not the virus itself. The virus by itself can't survive in a person who is healthy enough to fight off that virus. And a pe person who is immunocompromised or immune system is not strong enough to fight off that virus will be susceptible to not only cervical cancer, but many other types of cancers. Cervical cancer just being a very easy example this day and age. So that being said, we need to get people who are dealing with cancer, we need to get them to physicians who are going to seek the underlying causes of their cancer and their disease process and their illness and their immune deficiency and their nutrient deficiencies. If we can test for those things, discover, identify, and correct those, people would be living a much, much longer life because we would be the doctors, myself included in this, focusing on the underlying causes. And if they select, the patient wants to go forward with chemotherapy, radiation, and, and surgery to buy them time maybe, well, at least we're doing and giving them the herbs that science has proven can actually reduce their liver damage, reduce their mucosal membrane damage so that their body functions better, they absorb more nutrients, we correct their nutrient deficiency, we correct underlying factors that drive the inflammation, the damage. We allow their body to fully heal, thank God, if the chemo and radiation and surgery buys them time so we can continue on that process. But we shouldn't be saying, let me go through all the chemotherapy I possibly can at first, and then I'll try the alternative, which should be the main thing. The only thing that corrects underlying causes is what we, the wellness way, do. Like people should need to be given this type of information. Chemotherapy, you are not developing cancer because you have a deficiency of radiation. You are not developing cancer because you have a deficiency of chemotherapy. That is not the cause that you are correcting if that's all you're doing. We know causes or contributing factors that go in the development of cancer. Focusing on all those contributing factors, it would actually lead to a better outcome and more people surviving cancer or surviving much longer. That should be the mainstay and the alternative or the adjuvant or the buying of time with something like a surgery should be secondary. So let's go to the article that I wanted to focus on mainly. Many patients receiving chemotherapy for incurable cancers may be incurable by the medical community, may not understand that chemotherapy is unlikely to be curative, which could compromise their ability to make informed treatment decisions that are cons consonant with their pre preferences, in alignment with their preferences, basically. They say, but this may come the cost of patient's satisfaction with the doctor. So wait a minute. So basically they're saying that if doctors give people the truth, patients might not be satisfied with them. That should really perk up some ears. The study showed, if you want to know the truth and the whole truth about this study, they showed that the better rating a doctor got by their patient in terms of their skillful communication, how good of communicator they were, guess what? Patients being given chemotherapy and not being given the truth thought their doctors were the better communicators. So patients who actually knew that the chemotherapy they were getting could not cure them in any way, shape, or form actually said their doctors were not as good communicators. You know, I, I guess I could imagine that. Like I told a patient this morning before I went live here, I was a little like, so probably what is happening here is a doctor is like, I've got to go in and I've got to tell this patient that there is no way that any of my treatments in my office can cure them. That there's no way that I see them living when using my stuff, my chemo. So the doctor probably walks in and how, you know, if you were in those, that, that, the shoes of that physician, you should always give the truth. That's number one. But how would you go about it? Think about that. 
that's where I could understand the, the, the little bit of an issue here and why patients may think, well, he was so cold, he or she just flat out said, there's really nothing we can do. Chemotherapy will not cure this cancer. This is a terminal cancer. And patients basically would be like, well, that wasn't a, you know what? He just basically told me I was going to die. I hate that guy. I don't like this person. So I'm going to rate their communication skills much lower. But they gave you the truth. That's what's sad. Is people were more satisfied with their doctors if their doctors misled them. Or their doctors lied to them. Patients thought they are better communicators. Liars are usually deceivers, and deceivers need to be pretty good at what they, they're doing to deceive you and hide the truth from you. So they probably, it's, it's, just, it's just a sad reality. that This is what the research is actually proving to us. Let me read some more things here. Let me go back to the article. An article, simple read for you all, and then New England Journal Medicine is something else you can get to review the research from this article that is highlighted in this article. All right, some highlights I want to read to you. Their expectations are way out of alignment with reality. That means the patient's sense of reality, thinking their chemo was going to cure them, was way out of alignment with reality. All right? They said it di they did not understand that their chemotherapy was not at all likely to eliminate their tumors. Doctors are supposed to sit down with their patients and say, we can't cure your cancer, but they're not. Um, the study suggests we need to spend more time explaining the hard facts with patients. You know what? Here's what I think these doctors should do. The oncologists who don't have a tool to extend or save the life of these patients. Now, they argue that maybe it's save, it may be extending by a couple weeks. You ever seen somebody go through chemotherapy when they're getting treated at the end of life aggressively? Trust me, their quality of life is not enhanced. They are not living longer, period. Because you're giving them something that destroys their health on top of them being already in a diseased state that doesn't extend the life, lives of patients. In fact, several studies, if I go through probably later again, show again, people's lives are actually being cut short by chemotherapy. And that's what they say. They say this. Doctors should tell, there's a lot of harm in not having patients understand the finality of their disease, said this doctor. Chemo drugs are very powerful, quote, they have a lot of side effects. The chemotherapy is going to harm you more than it helps you, and it will and it actually shorten your life. And it can actually shorten your life. All of this should be taken into account. Don't you think patients should, cancer patients should be given that fact? That if we give you chemotherapy, we could actually be shortening your life. We could be harming you a whole lot because it's not a vitamin and it's not a nutrient. And I believe that your, your cancer is, I'm talking from the perspective of the doctor. The doctor, if they're being truthful, and I believe that you're just going to die. So I need to, I need to take a long time with you to describe how you're going to die and why you're going to die and that you are going to die. They shouldn't be doing that. They should literally be doing in, in the right world. If the world was righteous and did the right thing, Medical physicians, oncologists should sit down with their patients, every single cancer patient, not just lung cancer and colorectal or colon cancer patients that they deem terminal. They should sit down with every single cancer patient and say, the things that we give you in this office, surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy will not, will not allow you to live to your God-given health potential because we aren't giving you or correcting or removing the things that caused your cancer to develop out of your own cells in the first place. Because cancer is your own cells, just not working right, then even if we cut it out, even if we burn it out, even if we poison it out with chemo, radiation, and surgery, guess what? The cause of it is still there because you're still living your same lifestyle you were before. Those factors need to be found out about and corrected. Please go to a wellness way doc for them to help you. And there are other good doctors out there outside of Wellness Way, but I, I can vouch for most of the Wellness Way docs. We are willing to test and do the things necessary to figure out why your body isn't functioning right, figure out as many factors on that end of the spectrum as we can so that your body can function better and heal itself, which again is the best opportunity for somebody to live a long and healthy life. But they literally say it could shorten their life. And doctors should say that. They shouldn't take all the time in the world doing that. They should literally say, we have nothing that can cure you. 
and help you live a longer and healthier life. So what I'm gonna say is, don't waste your money here, go somewhere else. But instead of that, instead of being given the truth, look at these statistics, folks. Look at these statistics, let me get it. All right, here it is. Overall, 69% of patients with lung cancer and 81% of those with colorectal or colon cancer gave answers that were not consistent with the understanding that chemotherapy was very unlikely to cure their cancers. So 81% of what medicine thought was terminal cancer patients with colon cancer, 81% thought their chemo their doctor had convinced them to take or told them they could give them, they thought it was actually going to cure them or it had a chance to cure them. 69, almost 70% of lung cancer patients thought or were led to believe that the chemotherapy they were getting could cure their cancer. When in actuality, none of the patients should have believed that. So let's go through this article real quick. Chemotherapy remains the primary treatment approach for patients with metastatic lung or color cancer, although it doesn't cure them at all. Though it's the primary treatment. That should right there, that one sentence, get this. Read the whole article, but get this from it. So the first sentence is, um, our primary treatment and the only thing we really do for these patients is chemotherapy, but it doesn't cure them at all. But we lead patients to believe that it would cure them. That's the medical community. That's a medicine community. Medicine community, it's spelled a little bit different. M-E-D-I-S-I-N. That's the way you spell this right here. Medicine. It's sinful to not give people the truth. And I'm sorry that a lot of times when you tell people the truth, they just don't like you. Try living in my shoes for a little while. <laughs> but I'll tell you, the thanks you get when people finally realize the truth are worth all of it. I would rather 10 people hate me for telling them the truth than 100 people love me for lying to them. Sadly, cancer doctors don't believe the same in the same morals and ethics. So although efficacy has improved over time, but that efficacy is weeks or months, supposedly, and ironically, the efficacy of chemotherapy isn't that it's allowing people to live longer, it's that if you read the research, they're using less chemotherapy on these patients. They used to go hardcore, give them as much chemotherapy, give them the strongest chemotherapy. Now they're saying less is more. The less chemo we give to these patients in terminal cancers, the longer they live. So just give them nothing. That's what I want to just scream in the ear in face of these oncologists. Although efficacy has improved over time, chemotherapy is not curative, and the survival benefit that has been seen in clinical trials is usually measured in weeks or months. All right, substantial treatment-related toxic effects can occur. So just some statistics here, 1,274 patients with stage four lung or color cancer patients, uh, colorectal cancer. Um, out of those that they identified, 1,193, 93.6% opted to receive chemotherapy. So 94% of patients who should have been told chemotherapy can't cure your cancer actually it could shorten your life and it will be harmful to you. 94% selected to go with chemotherapy, hence, and given that, the reason that is, is because 81% of the patients were being lied to in the colon cancer group. And 70% of patients were being lied to in the breast, or the uh, lung cancer group. And I know this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, but the reality is, guess what? If you've been through breast cancer and you weren't given this type of truth, either you had a cancer that wasn't gonna harm you in the first place, and you'll be a survivor no matter whether you did the cancer treatments in the first place or not, or you have a type of cancer and cancer that is deadly to you unless you do something to correct the underlying cause and it's coming back and it will oftentimes come back on places like the colon or the lungs that chemotherapy causes cancer in because it destroys your lung tissue and it destroys your colon because they're rapidly growing cells naturally and properly. It's just they're not expressing themselves appropriately. They're not dying appropriately. And chemotherapy can cause cancer in these two deadly areas. So you need somebody to walk you through how to heal your body, how to get underlying causes. 
not wait till it comes back and just do the same treatments again. Again, 69% of lung cancer patients were misled to believe that their chemotherapy was curative. 81% of colon cancer patients were led to believe, wrongfully, that chemotherapy would cure their cancer. Patients were less likely to provide inaccurate responses if they received their care in integrated networks. What? Huh? Huh? Wait, what did that just say? Or if they reported lower scores for physician communication. So the two biggest risk factors for being misled or lied to, however you want to say it, lied to or misled, and they do blame the patient here in this article. They kind of blame the patient. They're like, well, maybe it's just patients just don't want to believe what doctors are telling them, that it is deadly. Eh, I think people would, most people I've talked to pretty much say, yeah, my doctor never told me that this was deadly until the end when I was dying. And then they said, yeah, didn't you realize that this wouldn't cure their cancer? They're like, no, you never told me that. But integrated network, you're working with a doctor who is not part of the medicine group. M-E-D-I-S-I-N. So integrative networks were actually more willing to tell you the truth about chemotherapy because ultimately they got to say, that won't cure your cancer, so you need to do things that might be able to heal your body. Looking at your immune system, looking at carcinogens in your life and in your body, looking at your gut health, looking at your nervous system, all those things can lead to underlying factors, identifying underlying factors that are allowing cancer to grow in your system. By doing those things and then working on those things, you have the greatest opportunity to live to your God-given health potential. But again, there it was. Again, poor scores. So if my, my doctor just didn't really talk to me very much, he was quite the, you know, donkey. Um, and so I didn't really like his communication skills, but at least he told me the truth. None of the other factors, so listen to this, none of the other factors that were examined, including education, functional status, and the patient's role in decision making were significantly associated with the likelihood of an inaccurate response about the curative potential of chemotherapy. The only time that, so the, the, for them to accurately be able to tell the interviewer that I understand chemotherapy will not cure me. So their ability to recognize that chemotherapy would not cure them was most closely associated with integrated practices or poor communication skills. So if their doctor communicated good with them, or at least that would, that's what they perceived their doctor to have been doing, when in actuality their doctor was misleading them usually, this happens a lot in cancer therapy. People are misled. Now, somebody might be able to argue, well, you can't take hope from somebody. You got to give them hope in something. Well, I'm sorry, oncologist. Don't give your patient hope in something that shortens their life, in something you know for a fact does not substantially improve their quality of life, does not extend their life in any way, shape, or form that could shorten their life. Don't give them hope in something. Don't give them hope in lies. I agree with giving hope to people, but don't do it through lies. There's a lot, there's somebody better that you can find your hope in. There's something a whole lot better than a bill of lies from your cancer doctor and chemotherapy to put your hope in. And that's the Lord Jesus. Like I said, folks, I believe full heartedly God has created everything we need in every moment of our life. We don't need drugs. Pharmaceuticals are poison. Look at this. Black walnut hull, I'll go through this later, kills cancer cells. Juglone, that's black walnut extract, was also proven to be a potent cytotoxic against cancer cells. Human, and this was in vitro, so in a Petri dish though, in a test tube in essence, but there is some systemic effects on it for antimicrobial and some cell responses, they have not done studies on it because they just won't let us. Because you know what, we gotta give them chemotherapy since it's the main thing we give everybody, even though it kills people. We won't let anybody try and give, 
terminal colorectal cancer patients black walnut hull extract and see how many of them live over doing nothing. No, we could never do that because then we might potentially show that God created something that could actually cure their cancer. What's amazing, if you do have colon cancer, black walnut hull can have direct contact with those, and it would be exactly the same effect as a Petri dish, direct contact. So, tumor cell lines, including human colon cancer cells, uh, human leukemia cells, um, resistant human leukemia cells as well. Oh, where are all the human trials on that then, huh? Wait a minute, so there's a resistant human leukemia resistant to the drugs. And black walnut hull has actually been shown to be effective against killing those cancer cells in Petri dishes. Why aren't we doing the human trials yet if the chemotherapy they're giving these kids with leukemia doesn't work? Why aren't we testing what God created? Again, put your hopes in God. We found that 69% of patients, lung cancer, 81% of those with terminal colorectal cancer or lung cancer uh, who were alive four months after diagnosis and who had opted to receive chemotherapy provided survey responses indicated inaccurate expectations or that they had been lied to. That's what I would like it to actually say. They're misled, at least misled. Maybe they weren't lied to on purpose. Maybe they're just misled because doctors who are really good communicators in their patient's opinion are horrible truth tellers. I, I know I'm getting so frustrated with this, but these are cancer patients. These are people's lives. This is families. I'm watching a family friend of mine. It is so hard, so hard to get through to some people. And even being friends with this family, still going through chemotherapy for what doctors are saying, and it's terminal in their opinion. And all I've seen is her get worse as soon as they started giving chemotherapy. Her life went from being able to function in daily life having symptoms, neurological symptoms of dizziness, to now laid up in a hospital bed in a nursing home because the chemotherapy devastated her health. As soon as the first chemo round, boom, no energy couldn't eat. Literally, it can take away the ability for your digestive tract to digest food and absorb nutrients. So you could have taken care of an underlying factor that was a nutrient deficiency. Now chemotherapy gives you further nutrient deficiencies and roughly 40% of cancer patients don't die from the cancer itself, actually are known to die from malnutrition. Why? Chemotherapy destroys your intestinal lining. It destroys your gut. Why aren't we doing the things that have been shown in clinical trials and human trials that we can give to cancer patients? Like marshmallow root. And it's not like the white little fluffy marshmallows you use in s'mores. I'm talking about the herb. So don't go like soaking white marshmallows in alcohol and being like, I heard the wild doc said marshmallow tincture works for um, helping you to protect your digestive tract against chemotherapy induced damage. So here's some marshmallow extract. That is not the extract I'm talking about. Please consult with me before you make your own marshmallow extract. <laughs> oh man. I cracked myself up and laughter is good medicine. So paradoxically, <laughs> Listen to this. Paradoxically, patients who reported higher scores for physician communication. So if, I believe my physician was a really good communicator. Well, if you knew the truth, you'd then be saying, wow, he's a really good liar. He made me feel really good about taking chemotherapy. He made me believe that the chemotherapy was going to cure me. So I had hope in this chemotherapy. Therefore, I did nothing else. I didn't go search out another physician who said, why don't we check your gut? Why don't we check for underlying infections? Why don't we check for carcinogenic chemicals in your bloodstream or your body? Why don't we look at the mercury fillings that are in your mouth? Why don't we go ahead and work on your spine and nervous system? Why don't we work on the stress response in your entire life? Why don't we do those things? And then we might get your body into a condition where you can heal yourself. Yeah, I didn't seek them out because my doctor, who is a really good communicator, convinced me that chemotherapy that wasn't going to cure me could cure me. So I put my hope there, so I figured I didn't need to do anything else. That's the issue here. 
People are being led to believe that will heal them. Thus, they won't go, go do what could actually heal them. So paradoxically, patients who reported higher scores of physician communication were also at a higher risk for inaccurate expectations. Huh. If you were lied to and misled, you were at higher risk. So a good communicator gave you false or misleading information, and you were at higher risk of having inaccurate expectations of what your chemotherapy could do for you. Whereas patients with colorectal cancer receiving their can care in integrated networks appeared to be at somewhat lower risk. So integrated practice tells you, tr tells you the truth more. Integrative doctors like myself, they call us integrative, well, I integrate everything that God, you know, as much as I, my knowledge allow me to at this point in time, everything that I know. I literally have patients. I have a patient who took his wife to, what is that major? There's a major, maybe some people online would know this. There's a major uh, Integrative Cancer Centers of America or, it's one of those major, major, like, they have TV commercials toting themselves as integrative. And, and, and granted, they do better things, but the reality is my patient whose wife was going through care there, and I'm like, you need to get her to do this. You need to get her to take this. You need to get her to change her diet. You need to get her to test this. You need to go to this. And he goes there with her at her visits to this cancer, integrative cancer center, and literally, they're like, yeah, we're going to give you chemotherapy, um, and we're going to do, um, we're going to do a attached and give you glucose at the same time and insulin. I'm like, whoa, cool. They knew that. Okay. Now what else? Um, uh, well, they didn't really tell us much else. They told us to eat more fruits and vegetables and take a probiotic. And I'm like, okay, yeah. What else? Um, not a whole lot else. And I'm like, well, next time you go, um, ask them about aloe. Ask them about uh, uh, milk thistle. Ask them about these herbs like turmeric and ginger root that help with the nausea and the inflammation and protect your liver. Um, ask them about those things. And they go back the next visit and he asks the doctors about those herbs and the doctor goes, where'd you hear about all those? Yeah, that's right, you can take those things and it would actually help protect her. So the doctor admitted he knew something that she could be taking and doing herb-wise could help extend her life and protect her against the harm from the chemotherapy that they were giving them, giving her at an integrative practice. I guess their integrative is eat more fruits and vegetables. That's, that's their integrative practice practices. Literally, he knew more than they did as far as them telling the wife. Sadly, she passed even though under their care she was doing integrative cancer therapy. But I'm sitting there with the husband telling him, do this, do this, get her to do this, get her to do this. And when it's not coming from a doctor, sadly, husband's home telling the wife, do this, do this, do this. Do you think she's doing all that? My chiropractor is telling me to tell you to do this, this, and this. Oh, that's not a cancer expert. But yet, I'm being verified by the integrated practice, but it's only because the husband asks the specific question to those doctors that I am verified. It's so heartbreaking people are being so misled and not being given everything they possibly can do to survive. Should we be concerned that the majority of patients, here's a good question, <laughs> should we be concerned that the majority of patients with these diseases provide responses suggesting that they do not understand that there is essentially no chance that the chemotherapy they are receiving will cure them. So, the, doc so this, the researchers are literally saying, should we as a medical community be concerned that patients are being misled by other doctors and that there is no chance that the chemotherapy they're getting is going to cure their cancer? Should it concern us that they don't realize that? Should it concern us that we're taking money from people, they're convinced that it's got a chance to cure them, but really it has no chance at all? Should we be concerned that we're taking or stealing money from people and misleading them? If you're lying to people, you're stealing from them, period. If they're giving you money based on an assumption or idea that you've led them to believe. You know, I tell people all the time, I say, listen, I have no clue whether what we're gonna do is gonna cure your cancer or not. And the reality is, I'm not here to cure your cancer. I'm here to do things 
for you and help you in a process of getting your system and your body to the healthiest it can be so that if you're going through chemo and radiation, well then at least we're doing things that are clinically proven or shown to have the strong probability to help you reduce the liver damage, reduce the intestinal damage, to reduce your malnutrition status so you don't die of malnutrition like 40% of cancer patients these days. I'm here to treat you and help you and show you evidence. You know what I do with my patients that are dealing with cancer? I get out all the fruits and nuts. So there are three studies, first visit. Three studies I do, and I'll get these to you guys. Um, but number one, it's testing of common fruits and or vegetables. Common vegetables is one. So you have all these common vegetables, garlic, leek, and onions. Okay, eat all of those. Green onions, not the red ones, not the white ones. White ones and green and red ones would help too, but the reality is green ones are the best. Leeks are really good. Garlic, like, ruled out and everything, except for I think leeks beat out garlic one time on kidney cancer. All right? So kidney cell cancer, leeks would be best. Garlic, best on everything else. All right? There are other herbs that are even more anti-cancer than garlic, but those are common vegetables. All right, and they had tomato on there, which was a mistake. I know it's really a fruit, but you know what? They're, they're, research, they're, they're, they're researchers. They don't know everything. They mistake the tomato for a vegetable. Gosh, it's really a fruit. All right, anyways. And then there's the fruit one, and they tested fruit. Guess which is the best fruit you should be consuming? Not bananas, not pears, not apples. What was it? Cranberries, folks. And lemons, lemons and limes. But those are common fruits. Common nuts and seeds, which one was the best? Oh, walnut. Which again, walnut hull extract, juglone, is even better. So folks, that's the type of stuff that should be foundational for every single cancer patient in every single oncology or integrated practice. But it's not, sadly. Those are foundational things that I do for my patients. And yes, I'm concerned, and I think they should be too, that patients don't understand the truth. Because it steers them to spend their money and their time in oncology office, getting chemotherapy, getting the something that won't cure them. That's the major problem. An argument can be made that patients without a sustained understanding that chemotherapy cannot cure their cancer have not met the standard for true ongoing informed consent to their treatments. So folks, if you know a family member or a friend and you are left with the bills to pay right now, or you just want to get out of your bills, guess what? Go into the hospital, the oncology office right now, get the copy of this study right here. Walk in, if you have colorectal cancer that is terminal or lung cancer that is terminal, and you walk in and you say, I was never told that this chemotherapy that I'm, my insurance is paying for or that I've got a copay to pay tens of thousands of dollars to you now for, you never told me that it had zero chance it was going to cure me. And because you didn't tell me that, then you have failed to give me proper informed consent and I will not pay you a dime. You don't have to pay your bills unless you're given proper informed consent. You didn't know that? Well, now you do. Don't pay bills to doctors who misled you. Don't pay money to people who are lying to you because that is stealing. Previous studies have shown that patients with cancer would accept toxic treatments, even 1% chance of cure but would be unwilling to accept the same treatment for a substantial increase in life expectancy without a cure. So what they're saying there is, if you said this has a 1% chance of curing your cancer, okay, I'll take it. But you're gonna have to suffer all the way through. But 1% cure rate, okay, I'll take it. That's what patients say. But they've done the studies and they show that if patients are given the truth, that there's zero chance we're gonna cure you. They look at chemo and they're like, I've seen people go through chemo. I'm not gonna do that unless you say it has a chance to cure me. It doesn't have any chance to cure you. They're given the truth. What do the patients then say? Nah, I'll live my life out the rest of my days not having to suffer, not having to sit in the hospital bed, not having to have a port run out of my chest, not having to feel like crap. 
for days on end or maybe even the rest of my life because you're trying to give me chemotherapy that doesn't cure me? Nah. Thankfully, then they have the ability, the time, the money to go out and seek out help from people who could actually show them ways to at least improve the quality of life and health in the remaining days, however they may be. I say the only person, the only being that knows how long each person has on this earth, including myself, is the one above. That's the good Lord. So I tell patients, listen, he's the only one who knows. All I know is I'm going to take all the information he's guided me to understand and learn through my years, and I'm going to do everything I can to stack the cards in your favor, to allow your body to function better, to give you the most nutrients we possibly can, to look at the science and evidence that's been available to us for years for cancer patients on herbs and nutrition and things that God has created. And you keep praying, and I'll pray with you, and we'll use nutrition, we'll use the herbs, and we'll give glory to God when you are fully healed. That's what I want to do with my patients. That's what I believe patients deserve. Most patient-oriented public websites do not include clear information as well. So even public websites don't even tell people the truth. It's sad. Yep. All right. Question on Instagram. Does this apply to vaccines that administered without full informed consent? So you're probably going to be hard pressed. Somebody's asking a question. Does this apply to vaccines that are not given with full informed consent? Yes. If you can, if you can prove, you may fight. But the reality is, if you can prove that you were not given full informed consent, then guess what? They are legally liable. They are liable for the bills. You don't have to pay them because you didn't accept something. You can't be stabbed with something and then be charged for it unless you said, yes, I would like to have that. And the only way you can truly be informed and say yes is if you're given the truth. So if you've not been given the truth, no matter what, if you've been lied to or misled, that's not true informed consent. You don't legally have to pay. Now, it's going to be hard-pressed to find a lawyer that's going to back you up on that. That's the problem. What you do is you battle on your own. And that's what I've seen patients be able to do. So it's a tough situation with the vaccines, I guess. But same thing. If they didn't tell you the truth and you found out the truth, you go back to them and say, you didn't tell me the truth. So I want to file a complaint, and I want you to show me how to do that. And you stay in their office until they show you how to file a legal complaint against their office. They legally are supposed to do that. They have a requirement to do that for you. If they wrong you, they have a legal requirement to right the situation. Sadly, lawyers don't oftentimes want to take up cases unless you're permanently disabled or killed or harmed so that you can then be a multi-million dollar paycheck, tens of thousands of them, maybe a million to you. Sadly, lawyers don't want to take those cases where it's about righteousness and ethics and morals because it doesn't make a lot of money. So there's a hard rock and hard place you're in. So could you sue? You're probably not. If you sign it, sadly, what's going to happen is all they're going to do is they're going to say, well, it's your word against theirs. I would say try to find a lawyer to do it. But the reality is if they vaccinated you and you didn't sign any type of informed consent, sadly, pediatricians and doctors are now including in their documents upon patient admission, you're basically consenting to anything they want to do whether they speak to you on it or not. They're not supposed to, in the legal definition of more informed consent, they are supposed to give you evidence and information in regards to the benefits and the risks and that ratio. They can't even do that with vaccines. So vaccines are an extremely hard scenario to be able to battle them because it's really just their word against yours. So legally, the law says you can. 
on medical ethics and things like that in true informed consent. But finding a lawyer and a judge to do that for you when so many of them religiously believe in vaccines or it just doesn't make a lawyer enough money because you're not going to be able to sue them a whole bunch. You're just going to kind of get them nothing more than really nothing because they're not even going to get a slap on the wrist except for the court costs. That's it. Because it's not really something that's like injury to your child and that you can sue them for wrongful neglect or, um, you know, malpractice. So, but I would say board complaints and things like that need to happen. Anything else there? Harry says, because sick people are cash cows. If everyone was healthy, no one would make money. Uh, Gina says, what about the measles virus and treating cancer? Promising, but will probably crushed by pharma. So I've read a couple of those studies, and it's extremely interesting. They're trying to say that the measles virus in the vaccine is the only one that would cure cancer, not the natural. It, it, so... I'm still looking at that. My jury's still out on that. I do know that other cancer vaccines have been found out to be fraudulently brought to market. So the way they're doing it, I'm extremely questioning it. So I'm looking at that. I do have my eyes on it. But again, I'm at the mercy of their evidence and research that they're putting out. So as I read it, I'm analyzing it, thinking about it. We do have evidence that childhood illnesses mumps especially, lower ovarian risk, cancer risks, um, different childhood infections can actually lower your risk of leukemia and other chronic infections can actually raise your risk of leukemia because your immune system can't fight off that bacteria or that virus efficiently so it just activates the immune system because you can't completely clear it. So there is risks kind of both ways but it always goes back to what's the status of the human being, the child or the individual, that ultimately makes for whether an infection would trigger something or cause something. Vaccines are completely different. When you look at the way in which vaccines work, they cause excessive inflammatory immune responses, which can drive the development of cancer and many other health issues. When you look at that, maybe then stimulating the immune system in that manner may increase the ability for the immune system to use inflammation to kill off a bacteria or kill off a tumor cell or cancerous mass. But again, I'm extremely skeptical, skeptical of the pharmaceutical industry right now, considering the fact that, and the researchers considering the fact that they've lied about previous cancer vaccines and found basically guilty of that and admitted that they lied about them, like the prostate cancer vaccine. So I have a lot of skepticism there. So I got more on Instagram. Okay, what's up? Um, so this one thing is clarifying. So basically when they tell us that they are safe after we question, we are out of luck once we accept their word and we initial fear. Is that, that's what you're saying, right? You would have to. So in that scenario, so let me read the. So basically when they tell us so, they are safe, Yep. Which is basically like a mental yep. fear that kicks in. Yep. It's not a lot. Yes. So somebody on Instagram is asking about in the reference to vaccinations. If we, ex if we question the doctor and say, are these truly safe? Is there truly evidence that shows they're safe? And the doctor says, yes, that is a lie because even our government bodies have evaluated it. The largest government report on vaccinations said you cannot say that they're safe by the evidence and you cannot say that they're unsafe by the evidence. They literally say there is no evidence to prove safety in accordance with all these hundreds of cases of people coming down with illnesses or problems or autoimmune or dying after vaccination. They said we can't prove that it's not causing all these health crises and uh, situations. So we can't say it's safe. That's the truth that should be given to people. It's a 835 page report that says we can't determine that the vaccines aren't causing the epidemic of childhood illnesses we see today. They can't prove that. So they can't say that they're safe. And that literally says you can't say vaccines are safe by this evidence because nobody's really done the evidence. And actually the evidence is headed in the other direction where it's clearly pointing towards great harm by vaccinations. But in the scenario, if you ask your physician and you are unknowing of the truth behind vaccinations and their harms, and you ask your doctor, are these safe? Are they effective? And the doctor says, yes, they are. 
then upon the standard of care, the standard of care is another situation that is really problematic in medicine, in medicine, M-E-D-I-S-I-N. If, if the doctor is doing what the majority of doctors will do, the consensus is you just tell the patient it's safe and effective. You don't need evidence for that. You don't need to be able to prove that. You don't need to have ever read a research study. You just need to say that. And as long as the majority of other doctors would say the same thing in that time or in that situation, then guess what? Legally, they're not breaking the law. So legally, these 81% of terminal colorectal cancer patients being misled into believing their chemotherapy was going to cure them, according to the standard medical practice, that is not medical neglect or medical malpractice because the majority of doctors are doing the same thing. So as long as the majority of doctors are lying to people, legally, the medicine system has actually set up a scenario where they're allowed to legally lie to you and you can't go after them legally without a major fight because they need another medical physician to say, I would have done something different. I wouldn't have lied to the patient. I would have told them that the government reports say that vaccines aren't proven safe, aren't proven effective by the gold standard medical science. I would have told them that. Well, most doctors aren't going to go on a witness stand and actually say that. So you've got a really, really hard fight there. That's the problem. Because literally they protect their own. Liars and thieves protect their own. No wonder the pharmaceutical symbol is the caduceus, which was a wand or a weapon used to protect liars and thieves. Greek and Roman mythology. Interesting stuff.